Hey everyone, welcome back to 996 The Hollow, and thankfully it won't be a disappointing video. That news broke this morning that Krause and the Coyotes reached an agreement for Krause's new contract. He was a restricted free agent, and his arbitration hearing was today. They were literally in the room, ready to talk about, you know, this one-year deal. It's probably going to be in the middle of the two camps, but thankfully Bill Armstrong and Krause, you know, met on some level and now he has a new contract 4.3 million dollars for five years i think it's really great i wanted and thought that would be fair for kraus to get around four million dollars i did not want that dollar to reach five definitely don't didn't want it to go over five when the numbers came out i think on friday or saturday that you know the arbitration numbers the counties were at 2.5 and Krauss was already at four million. That was just for one year. And you might think, well, the Coyotes gave up so much to go from 2.5 to 4.3, but you gotta realize that that was only for one year and Krauss has another one year RFA year if that arbitration went through. So with arbitration, whatever the previous arbitration case was, the new one needs to be higher. So imagine if you know, the arbitrator gave Krauss his one year deal with four million or they met in the middle at, you know, 3.3 .3 or something and Krauss explodes or just has another consistent 20 goal season, that number will hit five. And then the Coyotes are kind of in a rough spot where, you know, do we want to pay Krauss five million dollars for their long term deal? Do we sign another one year deal through arbitration, which will for sure be close to five? And then what happens after that? Let's say he gets even better or maintains just a 20 goal pace. You're reaching over the fives for Kraus. And it was reported that the Coyotes and Kraus agreed on the term. They both wanted a long term deal. It turns out to be five years. It, they just need to work out the money. To me, it seems that the Coyotes probably wanted you know, 3.8, 3.75, maybe just a flat four. Kraus obviously probably wanted 4.5, a little higher than that. So they meet at 4.3 for five years. I think it's great. You know, if it ages poorly, it's such an easy contract to move. I didn't look at, you know, there was no reports whether it was a no trade clause or no movement clause or, or what have you. But as a Coyotes fan, you know, we look at OEL. Well, who only wanted to be traded to two teams and Bill Armstrong made it work. Anyone would want Kraus in their lineup. Obviously, he plays a bit too high in the Coyotes lineup considering they have pretty much no one else. But on another NHL team, he'd probably be a, a really good third-line power forward defensive winger with some upside. And hopefully he continues the upside he had. Because he did have a career year along with Nick Schmaltz, along with Clayton Keller, and Travis Boyd and Barrett Hayden. But today we're going to talk about Lawson Krauss and his, you know, improvements and missteps throughout his career with the Coyotes. He was acquired by the Coyotes, wasn't drafted. Uh, the Florida Panthers drafted Krauss, John Scheika, you know, in the f first few times where teams were acquiring dead cap along with some good prospects or picks. You know, Krauss was one of the first ones. Uh, they acquired David Bullen's cap hit along with Krauss, taking away the cap hit from Florida, getting a good young player in Krauss, and, you know, the rest is history, as they say. Now, you might see here we're missing a year. We're missing a 2017-2018 season, but he was sent down to Tucson for a year, which was when Rick Talke took over the team. Didn't like what he saw from Krause, wanted him to work on some things. He went down to Tucson. He lit it up with Dylan Strom. And I think Nick Merkley at the time, Nick Merkley obviously didn't go anywhere. And Strom didn't go anywhere with the Coyotes. So he spent one year with the Roadrunners. A bit bizarre considering he played 72 games under Dave Tippett in his rookie year. You would think he'd stay on the NHL team. It's rare you see... A player play that much NHL games and then get back get back sent down to the Roadrunners. But it seems to have worked out. But to be honest, uh, maybe not. We'll see what happens. But it did end up working out finally with, with this passing season. So let's get into it. It's 72 game rookie year. Only 5 goals, 7 assists, 12 points. You're not expecting much. Um, that team really hit 
hit rock bottom there, and then gets sent down to Tucson, gets sent back to the NHL team, the Coyotes, for the 2018-2019 season, and he gets 11 goals, 14 assists, 25 points in 81 games, an improvement from his rookie year, starting to put things together, and then his next year, you know, even though he got the same point totals, he only played 66 games, so his you know, points per game, his pace of production increased, but his numbers stay the same in terms of points. 15 goals, you like to see that. Crouch needs to be a 15 to 20 goal scorer consistently. With this new contract, if he falls under 15 goals, it's a failure of a contract and a misplay, but I don't think that will happen. I think the pause and the problem Bill Armstrong had with giving Kraus exactly what he wanted because all of us know Kraus for so long. The Bill Armstrong came onto the scene in the 21 season and the Kraus had a really bad year. I didn't realize how bad it was before I made this video. I really couldn't, couldn't, you know, believe he only got four goals in 51 games, nine assists, 13 points. That, like, that was a really bad year and a bad first impression you make on Bill Armstrong. So, I can see where Bill Armstrong was trying to negotiate a lower price because he's only seen one good year out of Kraus and the first year Bill Armstrong saw of Kraus was pretty poor, really poor I would say. But uh, yeah, all his metrics went way down that year and then in a new coach, a new season with Andre Tourigny, 20 goals in 65 games, 14 assists, 34 points, 16 even strength goals. As you can see, he's not a power play guy. He's an even strength guy. He's not a top three forward, mate, probably not even a top six forward. He's just a really solid third line power forward winger who could play on your PK, who's defensively minded. He has some sneaky speed that's been increasing year by year. You know, I don't expect Kraus to be on our top line with Keller. Like, to me, that's not his ceiling. If he could be a bona fide second-line winger in the league, I think that's his ceiling. But I really like him as a third-line winger. If he could pot in 15 to 20 goals consistently on the third line, that's some great depth. And hopefully, whoever takes a spot on the second line in the future produces more than Kraus. Obviously, for this upcoming season, Kraus will be second line. He'll be paired with Barrett Hayden. The Richie, Hayden, and Kraus line had a great string of games right after the trade deadline. I believe that will be the line going into the first couple games of the season. Maybe Zach Cassian gets moved up if Nick Richie falls off a cliff like he did with his previous teams. But Nick Richie on the Coyotes looked really good beside Barrett Hayden. So I think that's the second line. But I'm thinking more ahead into the future. You know, when Josh Stone comes on the scene, what happens if Michelli really grows and gets on the scene and starts producing. What about Dylan Gunther? Does he go to the top line? Does he go on the second line just to start? That's going to push Kraus to the third line, but hopefully Kraus makes some good competition for those guys to earn their second line spots. I don't want it to be, you know, they throw those guys I mentioned, those younger guys, into the second line spot. Kraus goes into the third spot. And those guys aren't producing at a second line level. i rather they take the spot from Kraus. And Kraus continues his consistent production. Hits the 20 goal mark on the third line with a good third line centerman. Maybe it's still Barrett Hayden. Maybe Logan Cooley gets that second line center spot or first line center spot. You know, Geeky's there. Maybe at second line center. We'll see. We'll see what happens in the future. But for this upcoming season, having Kraus on the second line with Hayden and whoever's on the other end, it should be good. Both Hayden and Kraus had career years, so they got to continue to produce, continue to be consistent, and uh, be productive on the team and make an impact. Um, Kraus usually makes an impact. He's always looking to throw the body. His hits over the years have sort of decreased, but uh, not really. It went really high in the 2018-2019 in the season. I'm sure once he was on the Tucson Roadrunners, he didn't want to go back there. So Rick Tockett loves his players throwing the bar body and playing hard. So you can see that huge jump to 3.5 hits per game, but he couldn't really maintain that. And for a good reason, he turned more into a goal scorer with this past season. So his hits went down to 2.78. 
You can see here another problem. He had a 15% shooting percentage, with, which is unsustainable. So, you know, he did miss just like Nick Schmaltz. He missed about 17 games. So hopefully, you know, if he plays 65 games, he's not going to get 20 goals again. That's going to come down, but hopefully with those extra 17 games, he could bridge the gap to hit 20 goals again. That's not sustainable, so you're not going to see him score 25 goals in 82 games full stop. You should not expect that from Kraus. You should expect 15 to 20 consistently, make an impact night in and night out. That's why I want to see. Be a good penalty killer. Like, you know, his penalty kill minutes have increased. He's about almost two minutes per game shorthanded. He's a fan favorite. He loves the community. He just got engaged. So, you know, he's maturing as a, as a human being as well as maturing as a hockey player. As you can see here, he's deployed more defensively than offensively, but still got 20 goals even being deployed 57%, you know, in the defensive zone face-off. So, I like the contract. I'm really happy it didn't go to arbitration. Usually when arbitration happens, both sides get a bit sour with each other. It's a pretty intimidating meeting like you're going with one-on-one -on -one with your boss to say hey i deserve this and then your boss is like no 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 here's all the reasons why i think you're not as good as you think oh thankfully they didn't go to that point they just you know had a a deal in the morning i guess one of the sides woke up and said you know what let's just do it the right way because i felt like if it went to arbitration this would have been the first misstep i saw out of bill armstrong the jury's still out on the whole exodus and scorch rebuild i assume and i believe the team will be much better at the end of it than when they went into it so that's probably a good thing he did but he hasn't really made a one-on-one -on -one bad trade or bad move or bad you know restricted free agent signing this might have been his first one and this was his first major RFA signing. He signed Fisher and Deneen, but those guys aren't impactful to the roster. And, you know, they're not as star powered as Kraus, even though he's not as star powered as Schmaltz and Keller. He's still got Barrett Hayden to sign. I've heard no news on that. I'm not sure if Hayden is even eligible for arbitration, but he's our last remaining restricted free agent. Haven't heard of a hearing date. Maybe that comes up in the news later this week or next week. So he's got one more piece to fill in with Hayden. I'm pretty sure Hayden will probably get $2 million. Anything over two and a half, I think, would be an overpay. We'll see in terms of the of the contract, the year, and the length. I think it'll be a two-year bridge deal. I think Hayden deserves that. And on the Coyote side, I'm sure they want him signed long-term because they see him, he's going to improve, and his ceiling will increase tremendously if he continues to play the way he did this past season. But, you know, Barrett Hayden's a smart guy. I'm sure he just wants a bridge prove it deal. And then he gets to beg after that expires. So really happy how it all turned out. Kraus got a huge raise from 1.5 to 4.3. He's here for the long haul. He is now um, the second longest tenured forward in the future. So it'll be Keller, Kraus, and then Schmaltz has four more years on his contract. So he's part of the core, part of the future. Hopefully he's a coyote when that new arena in Tempe is built. And uh, maybe he becomes an alternate captain. We'll see. I just really want Kraus to flourish with this new contract and not make us, you know, scratch our heads as to why we gave him such, mo such big money at long term. But if he just continues what he's been doing, he doesn't need to improve so much. If he could just, um, just maintain this pace... I think it's really good. I don't expect him to be a 25 goal scorer. If it happens, this is a really solid deal. But overall, I just think it's fair for both sides. Kraus has been here for a while. He's been through some tough times with the Coyotes. It's going to be, you know, another three seasons of tough, tough times with that new arena. But hopefully, you know, at the end of that third year, the new arena opens and it's smooth sailing from there. So that's it for me. Thank you for watching. If you like what you see, spread the word. And as always, thank you for your support.